Hello my schoolers, welcome to my school channel. Today we'll be solving the 2019 past question for chemistry and we'll be solving questions number 51 to number 80. So be sure to check the description below for the links to other video clips that provide solution to the 2019 jump question for chemistry. So now let's go over to question number 51. What volume of 0 0.100 molarity of sodium trihydronitrate 5 solution contains 5 gram of solute? So we are asked to look for the volume of the molar concentration of the acid. So at first we are supplied with some value given that sodium is 23, okay, and we have nitrogen as 14 okay then we have oxygen as 16 so sodium trihydronitrate 5 is this okay so if we find the uh, molar mass of sodium trihydronitrate 5 this is what we should have okay this will be 23 plus 14 okay plus into bracket 3 we have three atoms here of oxygen times 16. Okay, that would be 23 plus 14. This is 3. This is 37 plus 3 times 16. That is 48. So when we add up, we will have 85. Okay. So recall that the formula for molar mass. Equals. Okay mass over mole and that is why it has the unit gram per mole okay gram per mole so we have the molar mass given as 85 equals the mass from the question we are given 5 gram of the solute okay that is 5 over the mole which is the value we are looking for if you cross multiply that means the mole will be equals 5, okay, divides 85. So that means mole equals 5 divides 85 should give you the value of 0 0.05882 and thereabout, okay? So we have gotten the mole. So we have to look for the volume in liters. So recall that molarity, okay, or molar conk, whichever one that will fit your vocabulary equals the mole okay the mole of the solute over okay the volume in liters volume in liters all right so we have already we have the molar conk already isn't it okay so we have to look for the volume so we can do this all right so we have volume times Okay, the molar conch equals the mole. All right, so we are looking for volume. We divide both sides by the molar concentration. So that means the volume in liters, okay, equals the mole. What do we have as the mole? We have 0 0.5882 divided by the molar concentration or the molarity of the acid, giving us 0 0.5882. 100. You can see that, you can confirm that from the question, okay? So when we divide this, we should have our volume in liters as 0 0.588, okay? In liters. That is what we should arrive at. So let's go through our options together. Option C is correct. So we are on to question number 52, okay? So the two ions responsible for hardness in water are, you know, we have soft water and hard water. So what makes a water hard, what makes water hard rather, is the presence of some dissolved salt that should be salt of calcium and magnesium tetra sulfate 6, okay? or probably calcium hydrogen trials or carbonates okay so definitely the ions responsible for hardness of water they are calcium 
and or magnesium okay so the correct option is option a this is question number 53 okay which of the following could not be alkane okay so this homologous series their family they have the general molecular formula of cnh2n plus 2 okay so if you look at this where the n is 4 okay so remember cn that is c4 h2n that is 2 times n which is 4 that is 8 plus 2 that makes it 10 okay so this is 5 5 times 2 that is 10 plus the 2 that makes it 12 this is an arcane these are arcanes a and b are arcanes let's look at c 7 c 7 that means n is 7 so 7 times 2 that's 14 plus 2 that is 16 so this is not an arcane family just note option c let's go to option d okay we have 8 that means n is 8 so 8 times 2 that is 16 plus 2 that makes 18 so this is an arcane family so option c is not an arcane option c is called an arcane group my schoolers it's very salient that you test and prepare yourself by taking the simulated jam cbt exam for your practices okay so we have the my school hub which is called the jam cbt practice my mobile hub and we also have the jam cbt practice software that you can install on your laptops and what have you i provided a link in the description below where you can get the my school app and where you can get the my school software the links are available in the description below so be sure to check it and click it and get the hub for your practice all right so let's go back to question number 54 so we have um, the electronic configuration of element z is 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s2 3p1 what is the formula of the compound formed between z and tetra ozosulfate 6 ion okay so when you look at this configuration you should first be able to identify what element is this from its atomic number so if we add up we have 2 plus 2 that makes it 4 okay plus 6 that is 10 plus 2 that's 12 plus 1 that is 13 so definitely it has atomic number of 13 and that tells us that is aluminium okay so aluminium combining with tetra of a six ion okay should surely tell you that this ion has minus two okay minus two as its charge so we have minus two and aluminium can give out three valence electron and this is already minus two so how do we balance it that means for the valency that aluminium can give out that is three times two gives you six for aluminium okay and for the sulfate aeon tetra sulfate aeon it is already minus two it's already two that it needs to accept so that means it has to be two times three to give you six that's that implies if you bring them together that implies that the aluminium has three so it has to be two of itself so that is three times two okay and for the tetra sulfate six that would be two times three so definitely your formula will be something like Z2, okay? And the sulfate ion will have 3 as their subscript. So let's see what matches the explanation. So look at it. We have option D is very correct. So don't forget to hit the like button. Click on the subscribe button and tap on bell notification so that you can get informed as we release our next videos. So we have question number 55, okay? The hybridization in the compound CH3, CH2, and CH is what? Okay, so the first thing that is going to help us out is to draw out the structure for this compound we have here, okay? Okay, I'm just trying to write it out for us, just to confirm, okay? All right, so if, okay, let me pull out the structure like we mentioned. Okay, so we have this. 
all right so we have an acute group here which is this okay so let me just draw it out for us okay all right okay so definitely this is a kind and this is propine okay all right so looking at this it's very easy for us to identify the hybridization okay this is c h3 okay so the hybridization here is tetrahedrally shaped so this is definitely an sp3 that is tetrahedral okay and that's about 108.5 degrees okay and if you look at the two carbon molecules here okay definitely you can just identify them as sp hybridization that means this it's linear it's a linear Thing on a straight line and that is about 180 degrees so if we want to merge them together that means we have sp3 and sp hybridization so going through our options option a is definitely correct question 56 the following are isoelectronic ions except so recall that isoelectronic ions they are just atoms and ions that have the same electronic configuration okay so when we look through it just record this that the configuration that we are trying to examine here is 1s2 2s2 okay 2p6 and the elements that fall into this configuration as ions or atoms they are between nitrogen to aluminium okay because when you look at nitrogen it is n3 minus as a ion okay so getting three electrons okay because nitrogen has the atomic number of seven okay so getting three ions it falls into this because two plus two that is four plus six that is ten so total of ten electrons okay so the seven Okay, the seven electrons of nitrogen, adding three to it, that gives you ten. So it falls into this configuration. That goes to oxygen. Oxygen is atomic number eight. So eight electrons already with two minus, okay? So eight plus two, that still comes to ten. Okay, so now let's jump on to, um, let's jump on to sodium. Sodium is number 11, okay? Just follow me. Sodium is number 11, okay? So, sodium has a valence electron of 1, okay? So, it's giving out the 1, is 11, giving out 1 electron, that means it has lost an electron, that means it goes back to 10. So 11 minus 1 electron, that is 10. You can see that. So, we have magnesium, valency of 2. Magnesium is number 12. Giving out 2 electrons, that makes it left with um, 10 electrons. Looking at aluminium, Aluminium has valence electron of 3 plus, okay, that means it has the ability to give out 3 valence electrons. So, and aluminium is atomic number 13. So, 13 from taking 3 electrons away from 13, that means it has a configuration of 10. Okay, so you can see between nitrogen to aluminium has a configuration of 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, either as a ion or atom in electronic consideration okay so now let's look at the next one silicon silicon is number 14 but silicon has the ability to just give out two moles of two electrons rather so if we have this look at silicon which is number 14 okay it can give out two electrons so 14 minus 2 that is 12 so it's left with 12 electrons it doesn't fall into this so if you go through our option you realize that silicon is the odd one out so looking at it, that's option C. So silicon is what we are looking for. Question 57. Okay. Consider the reaction A plus 2B. This is a sign of a reversible reaction. Okay. 2C plus D. This is the enthalpy change is positive. That means this is an endothermic reaction. So what would be the effect of decrease in temperature on the reaction? So, you know, we have the backward reaction and the forward reaction. You can see the forward reaction favors the product formation. The backward reaction favors the reactant, um, reactant side. Okay, so 
looking at this very well, when you increase temperature, that implies two things can happen. The number of particles that gains energy, okay, for collision increases, or particles have more kinetic energy, okay, for collision. So, if we now do the opposite, decreasing temperature, definitely you are favoring the backward reaction, the formation of reactants. If increasing temperature favors the production of products, permit me, okay, the making of products, the getting of products. So decreasing temperature gives you the reverse side. So look at option A. The rate of backward reaction will definitely increase. Option A is very correct. Always remember that we have several solution providers on the My School website that are waiting just to help you out with any question that you still have. Okay, so I have provided a link in the description below where you can ask those questions right now. And within a twinkle of an eye, I'm telling you, your questions are going to be answered. So let's go over to question number 58. A cell short hand notation can be written as a slash a plus slash slash b two plus slash b the double slash in the notation represents what okay so looking at the single slash the single slash represents the boundary between the solution okay and the electrode the solution and the electrode okay then the double slash represents the salt bridge or the semi-permeable membrane for the whole setup so definitely option c is very correct so in case you have one or two ways whereby we could have solved any of the questions better please don't forget to interact with me in the comment section below by indicating the number and the suggestion you would like to share so here we have question number 59 the shapes of water ammonia carbon dioxide and methane are respectively what okay so when you consider water, water has a bent shape, okay, with oxygen at the center separated with two hydrogen. If they are in their liquid or gaseous state, you can have them around 104.5 degrees. But if it's in solid state like the ice, okay, it can probably be around 109.5 degrees. So definitely water has an angular shape, a bent shape, like a V shape, okay. So that is for water, take note of angular. Then when it comes to ammonia, ammonia has a trigonal pyramidal shape, okay? That is about 107 degrees. Yes, 107 degrees. Then we have carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide. Okay, this is definitely a linear shape, 180 degrees, a linear shape, okay? The arrangement, we have the C, then the two oxygen atoms, okay? 180, so it's a linear shape. So coming to methane, methane is tetrahydra, that is about 109.5 degrees, okay? So if you want to arrange that, we have angular, okay, we have the trigonal pyramidal, then we have the linear, then we have the tetrahydra. So option B is correct. Right here we have question number 60. Okay, so which quantum divides shells into orbitals? So recall that shells are further divided into subshells and these subshells they contain orbitals okay so and each orbit orbit orbital in the subshell they have their distinct characteristic shape okay and they are being identified with certain letters like s p d f okay and such kind of division okay is referred to as the subsidiary or the azimuthal um, quantum number or what have you so definitely our correct answer is C question number 61 the oxidation state of nitrogen in ammonium nitrite is or are okay so now let's solve it out first the chemical formula for ammonium nitrite okay is this Okay, so if you separate it, we have the ammonium ion, isn't it? And we have the nitrites. Okay, so let's look at the oxidation number of nitrogen here and the oxidation number of nitrogen here. Okay, so for the ammonium, we have N 
plus, okay, this is equals to one. Okay, we have a valence electron of one here, okay? So, ox and we know that hydrogen is one. So, one times four, that is four, okay? So, that is N plus four equals one, okay? That means N equals one minus four and N equals minus three. Take note of that, okay? Then we have for this, so we have N plus into brackets, we know that oxygen is minus 2, okay? So, minus 2 times 2 equals minus 1. Alright, so we have N minus 2 plus times 2, that is still minus 4 equals minus 1. So, N equals minus 1. When it crosses over, it becomes plus. So, that is N equals 3. So, the oxidation numbers of nitrogen in ammonium nitrite are minus 3 and 3. So let's join the options together and see which one fits what we have. Minus 3 and plus 3. Option A is very correct. So we have number 62. Hydrogen bond is a sort of what bond? Definitely is a kind of bond which is by an electrostatic attraction okay between hydrogen atom and electronegative atoms like uh, fluorine like oxygen like nitrogen okay it, it forms a covalent link with them even though the strength is like one tenth of a typical covalent link we can still have it as a covalent bond so option d is correct so join me as we solve question number 63 okay Methane is prepared in the laboratory by eating a mixture of sodium ethanoate with soda lime. The chemical constituent of soda lime is slash R. Okay, at first, soda lime is used to remove CO2, okay, carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, especially in places whereby there is less amount of air that is available flowing in like for instance in submarines okay so to remove the retention of co2 in the air so the components or the constituents of soda lime is just a mixture of caustic soda okay which is sodium hydroxide and lime water which is gotten from slake lime okay so that is definitely c calcium hydroxide and sodium hydroxide option a is very correct so don't forget that you need to practice and prepare yourself for your coming exams so you can use our simulated jam cbt exams these tools are available as my school jam cbt practice mobile app or the my school practice for your jam cbt as softwares and i have provided a link for you in the description below where you can get the my school mobile app or get the my school software so that you can prepare yourself and be more confident in your exams. So now to question number 64. Which of the following set of operations will completely separate a mixture of sodium chloride, sand, and iodine? Okay, so sodium chloride is your normal salt, the common salt you use to cook, okay, or add to your snacks in the making. We have your sand that you have outside, okay? Then you have your iodine. So at first, this is a solid, okay? Sand is a solid, okay? And this is also a solid. Iodine is a, is a non-metal, okay? And it has a kind of dark gray or purple black color. It has a kind of shiny luster color, okay? So to separate this mixture, at first, I will advise that you add some water. So adding water to this mixture, by the time you stay it together, the sodium chloride dissolves in water. So you filter it out. So first addition of water, then filtration. So when you filter, you will have your filtrate, that is the mixture of water and the dissolved sodium chloride salt. Okay? And for the residue, you are going to have your sand and the iodine. Okay? So for the filtrate, which contains water and sodium chloride, you can evaporate it to dryness, okay? So you have your salt left over, then the water escapes as steam. So going back to the residue of sand and iodine, on eating, 
the iodine sublimes into gas and sublimation is the process whereby solid turns into gas so if you want to organize these operations together so at first you add water then you filter then you do evaporation okay to dryness then we go to sublimation so definitely option a fits what we have addition of water filtration evaporation to dryness and sublimation so don't forget to hit the like button click on the subscribe button and tap on bell notification so you can get informed as we release the next videos question number 65 200 cm cube of 0.5 mole per dm cube solution of calcium hydrogen triazocarbonate 4 is heated. Okay, the maximum weight of the solid precipitated is what? So we are asked to find the maximum weight of the solid form. So this is the chemical equation for the reaction. Okay, so we are told that. Calcium hydrogen triazocarbonate 4 is heated. So on heating, we have calcium triazocarbonate, okay? We have CO2 and we have water. So this is the precipitate that we are working on, okay? So at first, we have to recall that the value for the molarity of this is 0 0.5. This is given from our question, okay? And it has a volume of 200 cm cube. And recall that our molarity is in mole per dm cube. So we have to bring this volume right to dm cube. So if we are bringing volume to dm cube, 200 cm cube is equal to 0 0.2 dm cube. Okay, you can do your calculation. 200 divides 1000. Okay, 200 over 1000. That gives you 0 0.2 dm cube. So recall that molarity. Okay, is equal to the number of moles over volume in dm cube. If we cross multiply, that means our number of moles equals to our mole, which is our molarity, which is 0 0.5, okay, times our volume 0 0.2. If you want to make this easier for yourself, you can just do something like this. 0 0.5 means 5 over 10, and that means 1 over 2 times 0 0.2 means 2 over 10 and that means 1 over 5 you know we are solving a jump question so as much as possible we are working without our calculator so we have 1 times 1 that is 1 over 2 times 5 that is 10 so number of moles equals 1 over 10 or we can have it as 0 0.2 one okay so it doesn't stop there so we can see that we have a 0 0.1 already as a number of moles for the precipitate but if you look closely recall that the molar mass of this of our precipitates calcium trisocarbonate okay the molar mass remember that calcium is 40 plus carbon is 12 okay plus oxygen is 16 times 3 that gives you 48 48 plus 12, that gives you 60. 60 plus 40, that gives you 100 gram. Isn't it? It's in 100. So, we'll recall that one mole of this gives us 100. Isn't it? In a standard way, okay? One mole of this should give us 100. Therefore, we now have 0 0.1 mole would definitely give us an unknown value. So now let's sort it out because that is what the question asks us. We are asked the maximum weight of the solid precipitated will now be what? We cross multiply, this comes here. So that is x times 1 equals 100 times 0 0.1, isn't it? So x times 1 is still x equals 100 times 0 0.1 still means 1 over 10. 0 strikes out 0. 10 times 1, that is 10 over 1. So that still gives you 10 grams. So we can see that our answer is 10 grams. So join me as we go through the options together. Option A. Now on to question number 66. Which of the following conditions will most enhance the spontaneity of a reaction? So remember that gives energy equals the entropy change, okay, minus 
the temperature multiplies the entropy change okay and for a reaction to be spontaneous the gibbs energy has to be negative that is energy is being released okay very well so for the most condition that we enhance it it implies that the entropy change okay must be positive for a spontaneous reaction so for here that means the entropy change is negative and is greater than the temperature in kelvin multiplies the entropy change if you consider option c entropy change is positive and less than the entropy change multiplied by temperature of course we also have a spontaneous equation but this definitely most enhances a spontaneous reaction so entropy change is greater is negative and greater than temperature multiplies entropy change right here before us we have question number 67 X is a substance which liberates CO2 carbon dioxide on treatment with concentrated H2SO4. Okay, a warm solution of X can decolorize acidified potassium permanganate. X is what? So at first, what can decolorize KMnO4 can be an unsaturated hydrocarbon, probably an alkane or an alkyne. Okay so and we don't have that in our option another thing i can do that should be either a carbonate or an oxalate so an oxalic acid will do in an acidic medium okay so an, an oxalate will oxalic acid will react with acidified kmno4 it will change its color from purple to colorless okay and the reason why it will liberate co2 when being treated with H2SO4 is that the H2SO4 dehydrates it. It removes water from it, okay, to give out gases like carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide. So definitely, the substance we are looking for is oxalic acid, which produces carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide when treated with conch H2SO4. Then it also reacts with, when titrated with acidified KMnO4 in the acidic medium of H2SO4 to give a color change from purple to colorless. Okay, so definitely our answer is option D. Always remember that we have army of solution providers on the my school website waiting for you to ask your questions and gain clarity better understanding as well so i have provided a link in the description below where you can ask your questions right now and your answers are waiting for you so let's go over to question number 68 the velocity v of a gas is related to its mass m by k stands for the proportionality constant so recall that the average speed of a gas molecule equals the big square root okay of this multiplies by the gas constant then temperature in kelvin over the molecular mass okay so also remember that the volume is inversely proportional okay is inversely proportional to the square root of the mass all right so that means v equals k over square root of the mass okay and that means v equals k over m remember square root means raised to power half so if we go through our options we'll see that option b confirms our answer and don't forget that at any time you see any of the questions or solutions we have provided so far and you have better ways or steps that we can use to address any of these questions so please don't forget to interact with me in the comment section below by indicating the number and the solution you would like to recommend question 69 the emission of two successive beta particles from the nucleus 32 and 15 p will produce what okay so when you look at this what element is this if you count from sodium magnesium aluminium silicon phosphorus you can see the symbol p phosphorus so remember that a beta decay is an electron okay zero at the top as the superscript then minus one under 
as the subscript okay so a beta emission means the daughter is by one electron greater than the parent okay so this is the parent that means a single beta decay or emission we have a daughter that is by one electron greater than the parent so the first beta decay if this is 15 the parent is 15 then the first daughter will be 15 plus 1 that is 16 so that means we have the first daughter will be 32 at the top then 16 under but we are told that there are two daughters two successive beta emissions so if the first daughter is 16 be next 16 electrons so the next daughter will just also have plus one so we would have 32 on top then 17 under okay so that will be 17 be next and 32 on top and the element with the atomic number 17 is chlorine so our answer is option c down to question number 70 hydrogen diffused through a porous plug would do what okay so we are have to use the law of diffusion postulated by thomas graham in the 19th century and thomas Graham law of diffusion states that the rate of diffusion is inversely proportional to the mass of the gas. Okay, so rate of diffusion is inversely proportional. Okay, all right. So if we have this, this implies that comparing two gases, hydrogen and oxygen, okay, so would have hydrogen then oxygen. The rate of hydrogen and the rate of oxygen which equals to remember it's inverse so if hydrogen is up therefore it's inverse comes down okay so that will be the mass of hydrogen gas then also the mass of oxygen gas okay mass of oxygen gas and oxygen is the atomic so also the hydrogen gas okay so we know that Oxygen is 16 gram times 2, 2 atoms, that makes 32 over. Hydrogen is 1 times 2, that makes it 2. Okay, 2 year 1, 2 year 16. That implies square root of 16 is 4. This unveils to us that hydrogen will diffuse 4 times faster than oxygen. And option C confirms our answer. Question number 71. If the cost of electricity required to discharge 10 gram of an ion, which has the valence electron of 3, is 20 naira, how much would it cost to discharge 6 gram of ion, which has the valence positive charge of 2? Okay, given that 1 Faraday is 96,500 coulombs and atomic masses are x. With atomic mass of 27 and y atomic mass of 24 so we just have to apply michael faraday's law of electrolysis so recall that one more one faraday will discharge one mole of electron okay so here we are having for x we are seeing three moles okay so normally we know that three three faraday will discharge 27 gram okay of element x therefore if you look closely we are now having 10 grams so how many faraday we discharge 10 grams okay let's just cross multiply so we'd have x faraday equals 10 okay we can just have x so that we won't confuse ourselves with the letter okay so we just have 10 times 3 okay over 27 okay so 3 year 1 3 year 9 so we have 10 over 9 okay so that means 10 over 9 faradays will discharge 10 gram of this okay so recall that we are told that 20 naira amount of electricity is required to discharge this so we just have 20 naira equals to 10 over 9 faraday okay so when we multiply this we'll have 20 okay times 9 equals to 10 faraday divide both sides by 10 this is 2. So we have 2 times 9, that is 18. Okay, so the cost we are looking at here, even though we have having the Faraday sign, is 18 Naira. So just keep that at the back of your mind. Okay? Alright, so having gotten 18 Naira, let's go to the second one, which is the Y. 
Okay, so recall that one Faraday discharge one electron, one mole of electron, but right here we are having two valence electron, positive electrons. So that means two Faradays, okay, will discharge the atomic mass of 24. Is that correct? Okay, then would have unknown amount of Faraday, okay, to discharge 6 grams. So, if you cross multiply, we would have x equals, okay, 6 times 2 over 24. Alright, so 6 year 1, 6 year 4, 4 year 1, sorry, 2 year 1, 2 year 2. Okay, so we have x equals to 1 over 2. Okay, so 1 over 2 of the amount of electricity that we are talking about. And we recall that the amount of electricity we just got in is 18. So what we would have is 1 over 2 of 18 naira. So 2 year 1, 2 year 9. So the amount we are talking about is 9 naira. Okay, so let's go through our options. D is correct. So we have before us question number 72, still on electrolysis. The cost of discharging 6.0 gram of a divalent matter, metal rather, x from its salt is 12 naira. What is the cost of discharging 9.0 gram of a trivalent metal, y, from its salt under the same condition? Okay, so let's prefer solution to this question. Okay, so recall that. 1 Faraday, okay, 1 mole of electron, is that okay? Alright, so we said the first element x is divalent, that is 2 moles, okay? So we know that 2 Faradays will require to discharge 2 moles of this divalent metal, which has the atomic mass of 63, okay? So if 2 Faradays will discharge 63, Therefore, how many Faradays will discharge? Let me label this since the element is labeled X. So let me make the unknown factor B. Okay, so since 2 Faradays discharge 63 gram of it, therefore, unknown Faraday will discharge, we have 6 gram of it. Okay, so if we cross multiply, we would have 6 times 2 over 63, and that makes, okay. That makes 12 over 63. Okay, so this is what we have 12 over 63. So recall that the amount used to derive this is 12. Okay, so that means 12 equals 12 over 63 Faraday, isn't it? So this 12 is the amount in error used for the whole electrolytic process. Okay, so we have to find the Faraday. So we have this. If we cross multiply, we would have 63 times 12 equals to the 12 Faraday, isn't it? So we have over 12, over 12. Okay, this goes out. Definitely, the amount in Naira we are looking for is 63 Naira. So it doesn't end here. So we have to go further and check the element X, the metal Y. We've just gotten for X rather. So we are looking towards getting the answer for metal Y. So metal Y is trivalent, okay? So definitely we know 3 Faraday, okay? Equals the atomic mass of Y, which is 27, okay? And we are told that we have 9 gram of it in the process, okay? So we have unknown amount of Faraday for clarity. Of Faraday, Okay, let me make this A. We've used B. Yeah, so let's let's make this A equals the atomic mass which we have gotten as 27. So definitely A will be equals to what we need here, and that is 9 gram of it. Okay, so when we cross multiply, we would have 9 times 3 over 27. 9 times 3 is 27. That's 27. That gives us one. So that means the amount of electricity we need in Naira will be one times 
what we've gotten here times 63, that means 63 naira. So going back to our question, under the same condition, the cost of discharging a trivalent metal Y would be 63 naira. So option C is correct. Question 73. How many arc auxiliar canes can be obtained from the molecular formula C4H10O? Okay, so at first we have to prepare the structure, and this is the structure of what we have. Okay, C4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, then we have the H. This is 3, this is 5, this is 7, and this is 10. Okay. And we have the O, which connects them here. Okay, so if we want to name this, we want to see how many we can derive from this. And definitely is belongs to the A and E group, the arcane group, because it has just a single board. Okay, it's saturated. So looking at this, what we are going to do is that we are going to name this. If we want to name this, this will be one, two. That is the second member of the family, and that is 18. Okay. Isn't it? Then with this, this will be ectoxyl, ectoxyl, okay, ectoxyl, ethane, okay. So if we shift the position of this oxygen here, if we bring it to this place, okay, just imaginary, when we bring it here, so what we are going to have is, we are going to have, just think about it, if it comes here, all right, so we are going to have three ahead of the oxygen, so we are going to have one two three that is propane okay isn't it then we just have one here so that is met the methyl group so we have methoxyl methoxyl rather the methoxyl propane okay so now think about it again what about if we move the oxygen to this position here so that means before the oxygen, we have one, two, three as a functional group, and that is propoxyl. Just one, that is methane, okay? So that confirms that we can generate three members from here. So the answer is option D. Don't forget to always prepare yourself by practicing with our simulated Jam CBT exam. We have it as the My School Jam CBT Practice Mobile app, or you can also access the Jam CBT software, the My School Jam CBT software that you can install on your laptops and computers. Okay, so this will all help you in your preparation for your exams. I have provided the link in the description below where you can get the My School mobile app or the My School software for you to prepare yourself properly. Okay, so we are going over to question number 74. The reaction two moles of hydrogen sulfide react with sulfur dioxide, okay, to give us three moles of sulfur. This is a solid plus two moles of water is what? At first, we should know that this is a redox reaction because we have oxidation which is about the loss of electron and we have reduction which is about the gain of electron okay so when you look at it very well this sulfur dioxide acts as the oxidant or is reduced when you see it on the other side it acts as the oxidant because it donates oxygen okay and this acts as the reductant, okay? Because at the end of the day, it is oxidized at this side of the equation, at the side of the reaction. So this stands as the oxidant. The SO2 stands as the oxidant that donates oxygen, okay? So this stands as the reductant. So this makes it a perfect redox reaction. So option D is definitely our answer. So don't forget to always hit the like button Click on the subscribe button and tap on bell notification to get informed as we release the next videos. So we have question 75 before us. A solution X on mixing with silver nitrate solution gives a white precipitate. Okay, so that definitely means that there is a chloride present, okay? 
that means solution X should possibly be a lead chloride. Okay, how do I know that? Because a white precipitate that is soluble in aqueous ammonia. So the reaction between solution X and silver triazonitrate shows that it's happening in the presence of a potassium chromate, okay, a potassium chromate um, compound that is present. So that implies that solution X is lead because when it reacts with silver nitrate, it's going to form a white PPT of silver halide, which dissolves or is soluble in ammonia. Okay, so that is said to that solution X is lead chloride. Then we have a solution Y, when also added to X, also gives a white precipitate which is soluble when heated. Definitely solution Y also contain chloride ions. Okay, so that can be uh, hydrogen chloride, okay, hydrogen chloride solution. So looking at it, we can confirm that solution X contains lead, solution Y contains chlorine. So lead and chlorine, so option C is correct. Join me as we take question number 76. How many electrons will be found in the nucleus of an atom with mass number 23 and 17 neutrons? Okay, so this is quite tricky, so you have to pay attention. So recall that mass number equals the number of proton plus the number of neutron. Okay, so and inside the nucleus of an atom, we only have proton and neutrons there. Electrons are found outside the nucleus in their shells. Okay, so we've been asked how many electrons will be found in the nucleus is completely out of the league. So there will be none electrons in the neutron. So the answer is A. Down on to question number 77. An element Z contains 80% of, okay, we have this, the atomic number, and we have the atomic mass, and we have 20% of this, the atomic number, and the atomic mass, okay? Its relative atomic mass is what? So it's very easy. We just have to bring both atomic masses together and we solve for them. So remember the first one? We have um, 16 and 8, and in other one we have 18 and 8. The atomic mass is just the addition of the proton number and neutron, neutron number. So this is what makes the difference between them. So for the first one, it contains 18%. Let's see over 100, okay, plus the other one, which is 18, contains 20% over 100. That's very easy, okay? So if we look through this, 0, 16 times 8, that is 128 over 10, plus 0, cancel 0, okay? 18 times 2, that is 36 over 10. Finding the LCM, all right? So we have 128 plus 36. So let's add up. Let me make this as practicable as possible. Okay, 6 plus 8, that is 14. You lift 1, isn't it? 1 plus 2. That is 3. 3 plus 3, that is 6. 1 plus nothing, so we have 164. So we have 164 over 10. That should give you 16.4. So their relative atomic masses is 16.4. And option D confirms our answer. So, don't forget, we have several solution providers on the MySchool website waiting to give you answers to every question you need to ask. And you can ask those questions right now because I have provided the link in the description below. So join me as we go over to question number 78. When the end acyl groups of ethyl ethanoate are interchanged, the compound formed is what? Okay, so at first, let's write out the formula for ethyl ethanoate. Okay, so that means it's an ester formed from ethanol and acetic acid okay so this is what we're going to have ethyl ethanoate okay ethyl this is a functional group ch2 and ch3 ethyl ethanoate okay if you bring them together that's c2 h5 ethyl ethanoate so if we switch the acyl group attached to it so this is what we're going to have we're going to have a shift like this Okay, 
just watch this C O O, all right? Then C H three. If we move the position of this to this place, okay. So if we want to name this, this is definitely you can see the acyl group has been changed to methyl. So this is methyl, okay. One, two, and that is methyl propanoate. This is methyl propanoate, and it has a fruity smell like pineapple. So let's go through our option. Option D is correct. Over to question 79. The part of the total energy of a system that accounts for the useful work done in a system is known as what? Okay, so let's look at entropy change. Entropy change talks about the heat content of a reaction, comparing it with the system and the surrounding environment. Okay, so option B, none of the above, just hold on with it. So we have Gibbs free energy. This actually talks about the spontaneity of a particular reaction. Either it favors the forward reaction or the backward reaction, or whether it's a reversible reaction so gibbs energy tells us the total work done the usefulness of the work done in a system and it is being influenced by two things first the entropy change and the entropy so we have the entropy here represented with delta s okay which talks about the amount of disorder in a system so definitely the gibbs free energy tells us about the useful work done in a system option c is correct so here we are at question number 80, okay? Which of the following factors will speed up the rate of evolution of carbon dioxide in the reaction below? So we are looking at a forward reaction that favors the evolution of carbon dioxide. So remember that the rate of a chemical reaction is being affected by certain factors like increasing the surface area, okay, increasing the concentration, if it's for a gas, increasing the pressure, okay, of the system, addition of catalyst. So if we go through our option, we can see that option A states that increasing the concentration of the acid, of course, that's going to work. Option B states that increasing the surface area of ca uh, calcium trials or carbonate, which is a solid. So, of course, that is very good too for the evolution of CO2. So when we look at option C, says we can combine A and B. Option B says reducing the concentration of the acid. That's counterproductive. So option C is the best answer that works by we increasing the concentration of the acid and the surface area of calcium trials or carbonate. So that is the end for this segment, but you should know that there is definitely more to come. And I believe you are enjoying this content and you would like me to bring you more of it. So don't forget to hit the like button, click on the subscribe button and tap on bell notification so you can get informed as we release the next videos.